Hi everybody, Michael Anderson with Etail Solutions. Thanks for joining me again for our discussion of distributed logistics for digital commerce. Today we're going to be diving into dynamic pricing. And if this is the first time you're joining us, uh, I want to point out the fact that this is actually part six of an eight-part series where we're going to dive into distributed logistics and understand the, the, the high-level components of what allows distributed logistics to be such a game changer for digital commerce. I would encourage you, if you haven't done so already, to go back and watch the previous episodes, uh, as they will provide a lot of context for some of the things that we're going to discuss today. So let's dive in. So the first thing I want to talk about as it relates to dynamic pricing is the fact that this is one of the most powerful components that really is going to help us with this concept of yield management that we've been chatting about here over the last few weeks. And that is that dynamic pricing is really uh, the component that's going to help us find that spot, that balance between price and volume. This is about maximizing profit. You know, there's no point in denying it. We're in this business because we're trying to drive profit. Uh, and so profit is the point of a dynamic pricer. And we, that means that we've got to be able to understand all of the different cost components that go into this because if we're going to figure out how to drive profit, we have to know what that cost is to deliver that product. And there's a lot more to that than you might think. The next component is you have to be able to understand relevant market conditions and a dynamic pricing engine has to be able to respond to those conditions. And you have to be able to uh, react when one of those market conditions dictates that a change needs to be made. So let's dive into these three components here and talk about understanding costs first and foremost. Knowing and staying up to date with all of your cost components is absolutely critical. So that means that we've got to be able to understand item costs. That sounds very, very simple, but in reality, you may actually have different sources of inventory available. And not only could those different sources have different item costs, they could have different shipping costs, right? So even if it's the same product, it might cost you different amounts to ship from your own warehouse versus a 3PL versus drop shipping that from somebody else, right? So your dynamic pricing engine needs to be fulfillment method aware. It needs to know when an order happens, how am I likely to fulfill this in order to be able to understand how to set your floor price in the first place. You need to be able to take into consideration sales channel commissions, right? There are different commission tiers across all the major marketplaces or maybe perhaps you have a relationship with a, uh, a first party drop shipping type of uh, internet retailer and you're paying them a commission. You have to understand what those cost components are on the sales channel side. You need to be able to understand uh, what your packaging costs. Are you going to include any overhead costs? Uh, those types of things. And all of this really means it comes back to this point that we've been making uh, since day one here is that having a single source of truth and understanding how the demand channels interact with the supply channels is really, really important as it relates to understanding what this floor price needs to be. Now, also setting your floor price means you have to understand what is that minimum amount of profit that I need, which brings us to the topic of gross profit margins. And I want to take a moment and just pause and talk about this uh, because it's very, very important to understand what you feel as a business your overall gross profit margin needs to be. You have all of the things that are not related to a particular sale. You've got your payroll, you've got your rent expense, you've got uh, your utilities, etc. As it relates to selling, you might have long-term storage costs that aren't related to a line item, but it's still an expense of having a product somewhere, right? You have to know and understand uh, your financials well enough to be able to know what is my minimum gross profit. Because when you set a floor price, and I'll just put a, a very, very simple example here on the screen. When you set that floor price, you're going to need to take the item cost into consideration. What is your shipping cost? Ultimately, at some point in the equation, you need to determine what is the minimum amount of profit that I want. Now, regardless of your debate as to whether you're talking about rules-based engines or algorithms or even AI, None of that matters as it relates to setting a floor price. You have to know what your costs are in order to be able to do that and still be able to protect your margins. How you price and move your price up and down based on any number of conditions after that is a different topic. Knowing what your floor price is means you have to know your costs and you also have to know what's your minimum acceptable gross profit margin in order to be able to set that price. So the next component of this that we uh, need to discuss is how you need to be aware of relevant market conditions and how you react to those. So if you're a brand, I really encourage you to take some time and think through how you're going to interact with your channels. 
So when you choose to sell direct, you have to deal with what is your legacy? Do you have any resellers out there that are authorized? Do you have any gray market resellers? Do you have traditional distribution and or brick and mortar stores or franchisees, for example, that you have to take into consideration? Really think through just at a business level, forget systems for a moment, but at a business level, think through how you want to interact with your channels because the pricing engine can help you with a lot of that. If you're going to implement MAP, for example, how do you want to enforce that? If you have gray market sellers out there and you want to encourage all of the authorized resellers to embrace your model, then you can do things like, well, I'm going to sell into the white space. If I don't have an authorized reseller that I recognize, I'm going to go get that sale and be aggressive about it. Versus maybe if you force your resellers to register with you and you have a list of those authorized resellers and you run into them on a marketplace, your dynamic pricer can back off. Right? So a pricing engine can be very, very powerful in helping you implement and support your channel strategies. So if you're a brand, you want to think through those things. You want to think about how you want to deal with competition if you're going to run into it at all as well. You have to think about things like uh, a market condition could be your stock movement. Is, are you achieving the velocity that you feel that you need? Is your stock getting old and therefore you have to be concerned about long-term storage fees at either a 3PL or FBA, for example, with Amazon? Uh, what is your overall availability? Do you want that to actually be a condition that causes you to raise or lower your price? And then you can also take into consideration leveraging some of the market conditions and the, the normalized catalogs on a place like Amazon, for example, to actually drive your price on other channels up and down, right? Do what's called channel relative pricing. A lot of different market conditions to be aware of. And it's, uh, it's really interesting here because all of those different market conditions can be used as inputs to adjust your price, which brings us to the topic of triggers. Now, triggers, the best way to think of them is that um, regardless of what's going on in the market and, and so forth, you've published a price. Okay, So the sales channel is aware of a price. Now something has to impact and make a decision to tell your system it's time to resubmit a new price. Right? How you calculate it and all that stuff happens in the engine, but just the trigger of when do I reprice can be affected by a lot of different conditions. So that might be a cost change. The item cost itself has changed. So therefore, your floor formula has changed, and now you need to move your price up and down. It could be that the competitive environment has changed. So via the subscription API, for example, on Amazon, or you can do this on Walmart and maybe a couple of other channels, what is a competitive environment? Should that trigger a change in my price? Um, maybe your velocity is not right. You need to sell through a certain number of units and your velocity per day is not where it needs to be. Or your stock age is getting old is the example I used before. And you need to move through more inventory uh, a lot faster. Uh, or maybe you just want to have a certain competitive strategy and you want to seek a, a, the buy box or you want to seek a certain market condition. Uh, you can do those types of things as well. A few final points on, on these concepts in repricing that I want to touch on. Dynamic pricing is really by definition automation. And automation is nothing more than data-driven decisions. What that means is that data integrity is paramount. All of these concepts we've talked about in terms of normalizing at the master SKU and that base unit of measure, it absolutely matters. And if you don't do that stuff first, you probably shouldn't be touching a dynamic uh, pricing engine like this because quite frankly it could just dig a deeper hole for you that much faster. Data integrity absolutely is paramount because uh, pricers can be very very powerful. Um, be sure to think through what your fail-safe conditions are going to be. Uh, we ran across some of the gouging scenarios here recently um, re related to COVID. You know you might want to have a safety condition that says if all of a sudden there's no competition and that means that your, your pricer is going to go up to the ceiling. Well, maybe you shouldn't go to the ceiling in a, in a time like this because that would actually uh, trigger some bad things to happen in terms of uh, account enforcement and maybe pulling your account down uh, for gouging. Be aware of currency conversions as you're thinking about publishing internationally. And lastly, just because you're a brand doesn't mean you shouldn't uh, consider leveraging the capabilities of competitive repricing because you can get a tremendous amount of data back. What you choose to do with that competitive data, uh, whether you choose to compete or not, is a different issue. But you've got access to really powerful data, so take that into consideration. So thanks for joining me this week. Next week, we are going to be talking about distributed order management, or DOM as it's known. I look forward to talking to you then.